It's the season for summer romance. You picture yourself going on a bike ride or having a cute little picnic in the park with your significant other. But if no special someone is in sight right now, we have relationship expert Dr. Christie here to help you out this morning. Dr. Christie, things have changed so much. The game is so different right now in 2024. We have online dating. We are swiping on apps that we do not know how to navigate. For those who don't even want to tap into that online dating realm, where do we meet people without these apps? It's a tough conversation. Great question, Peyton. So what I've been telling people, especially this year, as you've been seeing dating app activity dropping at alarming rates, is that you want to go to places in real life that align with your lifestyle and your values. You're much more likely to find a potential partner when you're at an event or something that you just enjoy doing naturally. You're going to attract like-minded people that you'll likely find that spark with. So make that a part of your daily or weekly routine routine to get out there in person if you feel like the dating apps aren't working really well for you right now. Yeah, I think that's so true. And I think people often make the mistake and correct me if I'm wrong, but I think people make the mistake of just going where there are going to be a ton of people without really thinking about where you are and why you're there. So like you said, if you're in a space, if you're at a concert and you don't even know the artist, right? I mean, that's not always making for the most like-minded uh, connection. Um, with that too, though, then Dr. Christie, I think a lot of people really struggle just connecting and conversing. What are your ways for having those good in-person conversations? I think people are so used to being protected behind the screen and just being like, oh, I see you went to Colorado, so did I. I mean, again, how, how are people now connecting in a non-digital space? I always say it's great to practice just being in real life with friends or meeting people. So making that part of your daily or weekly routine can be very helpful to work on those social skills. You might be surprised, but people have really been struggling in that area post mm -hmm. the pandemic. So just g doing things that aren't necessarily coming with the pressure of dating or is this person my person can be a really helpful place to practice. When you do go to those places where you're meeting like-minded individuals, I always recommend a short and sweet conversation and then making that transition. So saying, hey, like, you know, and connecting over whatever that is. Once you feel like there's a spark or something there after a few minutes, transitioning and saying, oh, I need to go back to my friends or I need to go do this thing, but would love to grab coffee and get to know each other more or something like that. And creating that transition, it's really helpful. A big mistake I see people make is getting caught in these super long conversations when you meet someone in real life and you don't really know if that's going to lead to anywhere after that. So so making that quick connection and then transitioning it to an individual, um, you know, coffee or something to get to know them deeper is really the way to go. Wait, I'm liking that tactic, Christy. You find that initial common interest and you're like, let's let's follow up on this. Let's get coffee sometime. We'll chat about it. Okay, great idea. Also, too, I love how you said, I'll share this brief little anecdote, but just like you said, just practicing conversing in general, not even necessarily in a dating space, but just as people, as humans, my daddy and I, this, this is kind of sweet. When I was growing up, we'd play this game. We would take walks um, throughout the summertime. And, um, you know, it's funny, sometimes you'll see someone walking from far away and people will kind of like look down just until like right when you pass them, right? And then just be like, oh, hey, and then keep walking. He and I started this game. I was probably like 10 at this time. We started this game where we would see who could start chatting from the farthest away, like between the two of us. Okay. We'd make that initial conversation <laughs> start from like, I don't know, 50 feet away. Be like, oh, that's a nice dog. What kind of dog is that? And keep the conversation going the whole time until you pass. So feel free to take that little I game and that. do with that what you will. But lastly here, Christy, just as we wrap up again, all of this, again, we're so grateful for, for you and your expertise, but it's still overwhelming. In summer, I think, especially this specifically kind of hard time maybe for some people wanting to have that fun, sweet relationship uh, from the summer and, of course, into even beyond that. Three final tips, I guess, maybe for dating going into this season for people who are wanting to find that relationship, not sure how to make it happen. Any kind of final words of wisdom from you? Yeah, and I love that tip, Peyton, from your dad. Training you in that way is probably why you're so friendly and great in conversations <laughs> at you. this point. So love that. Mother. If you're a parent, do that with your kids. I'm going to start that. So I would say if you are looking for love this summer, the first thing that you really want to do is get out there and do things that you enjoy doing with one or two friends. Don't go with like a group of girlfriends. I mean, you can go, but don't expect that that's going to lead to those um, connections on the individual basis. So go with one or two friends to things that you would naturally enjoy doing. That way, if you don't happen to meet your person, you still really had a great time yeah. and it's a win. It's not that disappointing feeling like, oh, I'm still single or whatever. 
that may be. The second thing is focusing on if you're using the dating apps, chat a little bit, make that connection, but get off the app and in real life. Mm -hmm. Don't stay for two weeks chatting back and forth without meeting someone because that's where that connection and chemistry goes. And the final thing is making sure that you're going out there and doing activities. Research shows that that's where that chemistry is really built when you're kind of doing an activity date. So if there's something that's fun that you can kind of connect with and not just sitting across a dinner table and letting the conversation get stale, that is really the way to go. Especially if you're like, oh, I don't know if I like this person, or if there's that connection, go out there, do something fun in the summer, and you might see that connection grow when you weren't sure if it's there. Yeah, I think seeing people in different environments can always be really telling how they're, you know, if his golf swing isn't fantastic. I'm like, how are you going to handle that? How are, we, how are we working with that? Dr. Christie, we love you. And again, you are so wise and just so personable. And we love having you on the show every time. Thank you again for coming on. Again, this is Dr. Christie. You can follow her along for more fabulous dating advice. But for now, my friend, thank you again so much and happy summer to you. We'll check back in again soon, I know. Thank you.